Hi, this is Jason and welcome to this section of the Pre-Algebra Tutor. And in this section we're going to continue working with fractions. We're going to talk about dividing fractions. Now I told you in the last section that if you know how to multiply fractions, then learning how to divide them is actually really, really simple. In fact, I would go as far as to say that if you already know how to multiply them, then dividing them really is no extra work at all. So this is kind of a short little section. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Dividing fractions is no big deal. You would think it's going to be complicated. It's really not going to be anything more than multiplying them. So we'll see that here in just a second. Um, one more thing I'll tell you. Just like in the multiplication of fractions, when we divide them, we don't care about the denominators. We don't have to find common denominators. So it's really easier in a lot of senses. So let's go ahead and jump into it and show you what I'm talking about. What if you have uh, 3 fourths, the fraction 3 fourths, and a lot of times you'll see it written as this, divided by 5 sevenths. Now, in your mind, I want you to think that this is the same as 3 fourths divided by 5 sevenths. I'm drawing a longer line here to, to kind of show you, because if I cut it off like this, then it would look kind of weird with all the lines there. But this fraction 3 fourths divided by this fraction here, that's really what you're doing. Now here's all you do when, you have, when you're confronted with a division problem. You take the first fraction, you write it down, 3 fourths. You change this division into a multiplication. You can do that. But then you take the second fraction, you flip it over. 7 fifths. So see, every single multiplication problem that you do with fractions is going to turn itself into a, I'm sorry, every single division problem that you do in fractions is going to turn itself into a multiplication problem. And so now that you know how to do this, then the rest is easy. So all you do is proceed as usual. 7 times 3 is 21 over 4 times 5 is 20. Now this is the answer, but this is an improper fraction, so we'll just say 20 can go into this one time with one left over. We write it as a as a remainder of 20, so we have 1 and 1 twentieths. That's how you do that fraction division. Um, you know, when you're dealing with basic math, basic division, long division, division is very difficult because it's got a lot of steps and a lot of, you know, think new concepts, remainders, and all these other things. But fraction division is actually really simple because it just gets turned into multiplication every time. So there's not going to be any harder problems we're going to do in this section. That's why it's so short. We're just going to continue working some more to, just to make you believe that it's really no more than what you've already been doing. What if you have uh, 2 fifths divided by 1 seventh? All you do is you rewrite it. So you'll just say, like, you put an equal sign, 2 fifths, change this division into a multiplication, turn the second fraction over, 7, 1, 7 over 1. And so we just proceed as normal. 2 times 7 is 14. 5 times 1 is 5, but this is improper, so we'll divide it back out again. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, so it can only go 2 times. 5 times 2 is 10, the difference between 14 and 10 is 4, we write it over 5. So 2 and 4 fifths, and that's the answer. Now what if we have, let me write it a different way, 3 sevenths divided by 6 fifths. It's the same thing as writing it this way. I'm just choosing to write it a little bit different every now and then to kind of just to show you that it's the same thing. So you can write this as 3 sevenths, change this division into a multiplication. You take the second fraction and you flip them over to multiply them, 5, 6. I kind of like to think of this, uh, forgive my little mental image of this, it helps me sometimes, certainly when I was younger. If you think of this as like a monkey bars, this fraction here is kind of hanging on to the bottom of this, kind of swing back and forth. So to change this division into a multiplication, he has to kind of flip himself up like this. So he's flipping himself upside down to be multiplied. That's how it sort of happens. It helps you remember in some cases. And so it's a little easier sometimes to write it like that. But you have 7 3 sevenths uh, times 5 6. Now, I want to show you something. You could multiply 5 times 3, and that would give you 15. And you can multiply 7 times 6, and you'd get the denominator. And then you could simplify that fraction, and you would get the answer. And that will always get you the answer every single time. However, you can save yourself some steps. And it's going to really save yourself a lot of steps over, th over time. When you have this fraction, and it's multiplied by this other fraction, you should start getting in the habit in algebra, and certainly in fractions, of looking at things in the top and in, in the bottom of a fraction to see if there's something you can cancel out. And what I mean by that is, when you really think about it, this is 3 times 5 on the top, and this is 7 times 6 on the bottom. So I have a 3 here, and I have a 6 here. So if I wanted to, I could divide the top by 3, and that's going to 
basically give me sort of a one there. Three divided by three is gonna give me that, give me a one. So really I don't have to write the one, but I'm gonna write it here for you. And I can divide the bottom also by three. Six divided by three would give me two. So you see what I've done here is I've sort of had an original set of fractions here, but I've sort of pre-simplified it, so to speak. So I could have multiplied it all out and then simplified the answer, but it's easier a lot of times to sort of do simplification up ahead of time. This is no different than simplifying at the end, it's just going to save you some time because now I can take and multiply 1 times 5 to give me 5, and I can multiply 7 times 2 to give me 14, and this fraction is now fully already simplified. But if I multiply this, 7 times 6, I'm going to have 42 on the bottom, and then I'm going to have 15 on the top, it's, you're going to get into larger and larger numbers. And it's just going to be a little bit more of a pain to simplify it at the end. Plus, doing it this way is going to be absolutely required when I give you a fraction that has variables in it, like x squared or x cubed. You'll have to look in the top and the bottom and cancel them. So it's really important for you to get into the habit of doing it right now, because it'll be a, a very easy step to make in a few sections when I show you how to do it with letters in the top and the bottom. But for now, you're just looking to see I have 3 and I have 6. I can divide the top by 3, that's going to give me 1. Divide the bottom by 3, that's going to give me 2. The 5 and the 7, there's nothing I can do there, so I'm already done. So from here on out, we're going to look at every single one of these problems and see if we can pre-cancel anything before we actually get any farther. Here we have 2 ninths divided by 4 fifths. Okay, so it's a division, so we just write the 2 ninths like this change the division to multiplication, we flip the second fraction over 5 fourths. Now take a moment to look at that and see what you have. We have 5 and 9, you really can't divide that out, but you have 2 and 4. It doesn't matter if they're on the same side or if they're criss because in the end you're going to multiply all the stuff together on the top and the bottom anyway. So here I could divide the top by 2, getting rid of that because that's going to give me 1. I can divide this by 2 and that's going to give me 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So at the top, I've got an implied 1 here, times 5, gives me 5. Here I have 9 times 2, it's going to give me 18, so I have 5 eighteenths. That's the answer. Notice it's already fully simplified, there's nothing more to do. Pre-canceling is going to be much easier, so I strongly urge you to do that now. It's going to be very, very important as we move into more complicated problems. Negative 4 ninths divided by one half. So we'll take the first fraction, negative four ninths, change this to a multiplication, and then flip over the other one, two over one. And so we look at this and we say, well, can we cancel anything? We have two and nine and one and four. There's really nothing we can cancel, so we just proceed as usual. Negative four times two, negative eight, over Nine times one is nine. You can leave it like that, but you can bring that negative out in front. Sometimes it's easier to see that it's a negative fraction if you just pull it out in front. Negative eight ninths. What if you had six sevenths divided by negative two thirds? So it's hanging on the monkey bar, so to speak. So you can have six sevenths multiplied by, take this guy, flip it up, and you'll have negative three halves. And so you look at this and you're you look at this and you see 3 and 7, not too promising, but you have 6 and 2, and you can definitely simplify that. We'll divide the bottom by 2, so this 2 will divide it by 2, giving us 1. We'll divide this by 2, you have to divide by the same number, and that's going to give us 3. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 2 times this implied, I'm sorry, 7 times this implied 1 is going to give us 7, so you have negative 9 sevenths, but that's an improper fraction, so Put the negative sign out front. How many times can 7 go into 9? One time with 2 left over out of 7. So negative 1 and 2 sevenths. And we're just going to keep doing this over and over again with different problems. Maybe getting a little bit, you know, bigger as we go, but really you've got the, the basic technique. Negative 12 seventeenths divided by 6 seventeenths. So we're going to change this to multiplication. Negative 12 17ths multiplied, take this guy, flip it over, we'll have 17 over 6. Now, we look at this and we say, well, right off the bat I have 17 in the top and 17 in the bottom. It's just like having, you know, 3 over 3, you can divide them out. So, 17 divided by 17 is 1, 17 divided by 17 is 1. Divide top and bottom by 17. So I'm done with that, but you don't have to stop there. You have 12 and you have 6. I can divide 6 by 6 giving me 1, I can divide this by 6, 
uh, giving me 2. Don't forget I have a negative out front here. So I have negative 2 times 1. It's going to give me negative 2. And then here I have a 1, and here I have a 1. That just gives you 1. So now I have negative 2 over 1, which is just going to be negative 2. And that's the answer, negative 2. So really, it's just a matter of looking at what you have and canceling out what's appropriate and uh, basically saving yourself a lot of time. Because if I had to multiply um, 12 times uh, over here, let's do 12 times 17, that's a very large number. Then I'll have 17 times 6. That's another very large number. And then I have to simplify the answer. That's going to take a long time. If I pre-simplify ahead of time, um, you can see how easy it was. I just did it really quickly, multiplied, everything fell out ahead of time, and it's very, very easy. So doing this ahead of time may seem a little weird at first, but it really does save you work. What about 4 and 2 fifths divided by 11 fifteenths? Well, what we want to do when we have mixed fractions with division like this, we want to convert them to improper. So 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 gives me 22 over 5. We're going to change this division to multiplication, and we're going to take this fraction and flip it over. So we're doing the same thing every single time we do these kinds of problems. Now again, this is a great example. 22 times 15 would be a very big number. 11 times 5, 55. That's another pretty big number. Then we'd have to simplify the answer. But by looking ahead, we see that we have 11 and 22 play nice together. I divide this by 11. I divide this by 11, giving me 2, because 11 times 2 is 22. And then looking at here, I have 5. I divide this by 5, getting rid of it. And I divide this by 5, giving me 3. So now everything's sort of pre-simplified. 2 times 3 is just going to give me 6. 1 times 1, these are both implied, is just going to give me 1. 6 divided by 1 is 6. So after all of that division, it's just going to go 6 whole times. Tremendous time saver. And actually pretty integral to everything you're going to learn that, and, and that follows here. What if we have 3 and 1 fifth divided by 8 elevenths? So let's change this fraction over. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16 fifths. Change this division to multiplication. Take this fraction, flip it over. So we have 11 eighths. Okay? Now we try to look and see if we can pre-simplify anything. 11 and 5 are not going to really play together, but 8 and 16 will. We can divide this by 8, give me 1. I can divide this by 8, giving me 2. That's about all I can do. 2 times 11 is 22. 5 times this implied 1 is going to give me a 5. This is an improper fraction I can convert back. 5 times 4 gives me 20 uh, with a remainder of 2, and I'll write it out of 5. So 4 and 2 fifths. All right, moving right along. What if we have 4 and 2 fifths? divided by 5 and 1 fifths. So really no difference. We just have two mixed fractions instead of one. So what we're going to do is, uh, before we do any actual switching over to multiplication, let's convert them both. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22 over 5, divided by 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26 over 5. So here we have this division problem. But we're just going to convert it 22 over 5, change this to multiplication, flip this fraction over, 5, 26. So again, if I multiply this out, 22 times 5 and 5 times 26, I'd have a large number. But 5 is going to go out with 5. I can divide top and bottom by 5 and get rid of those. For this guy, I can divide the top by 2. So 22 divided by 2 is going to give me 11. This divided by 2 is going to give me 13. Okay, so that's pretty much all I can do. 11 times this implied 1 is going to give me 11. This implied 1 times 13 is going to give me 13. So I have 11 thirteenths, and that's the final answer, and I really can't do any more with it. So I'm done. So you see, even in the, in the worst case, when I have a mixed number divided by a mixed number, you take one step at a time. You convert to improper, convert to improper, change to multiplication, multiply, simplify. That's basically it. And if you have a negative number, like in this problem, it's really no different. 3 and 2 fifths. Uh, divided by 3 and 1 tenth. 3 and 1 tenth. So we're going to change them both before you do anything else. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17 over 5. Don't forget that it's negative. 
and we're going to divide by 10 times 3 is 30 plus 1 is 31 over 10. 31 over 10. So let's change to multiplication. 17 over 5 multiplied by, flip this over, 10, 31. And that is going to be it. Now look at what we have here. I can divide this by 5, and I can divide this by 5, giving me 2. And so I'm going to have that guy, and now the answer is going to be 17 times 2 is 34. 1 times 31 is going to give me 31. So I have an improper fraction, or 34 over 31. Don't forget it's negative because of this negative sign here. This can go 1 time with 3 left over out of 31. 3 out of 31 left over, and that's the final answer. Now, just like we talked about a minute ago, um, you know, if these sorts of problems have numbers, you get really used to that and you get comfortable with it, and that's great. But even if they have letters, variables, then it's really the same thing. You just need to make sure you're operating on the same set of rules. Don't forget, those variables are just numbers. You don't know what they are. So treat it with the same rules that we already learned. Don't start inventing math that you haven't learned before. So if you have something like x over 4 as a fraction, and you divide that by 2 fifths, a lot of students will look at that and say, whoa, that's totally different than anything I've ever seen before. But you just take it one step at a time. x over 4, change this to a multiplication, flip this fraction over 5 halves. Okay, can't really do any pre-simplification, but what I will have is 5 times x is going to give me 5x, and on the bottom, 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. So the answer is going to be 5x divided by 8, and there's really nothing else you can do to simplify that. You can't take anything out of the top or the bottom, that's just what you're left with. Now again, working with fractions that have variables in them, you know, another example would be, for instance, a over 4 divided by 5 halves. So again, this is a fraction that we have a different denominator here. Uh, but again, when we're multiplying or dividing fractions, it doesn't really matter what the denominator is. So let's just proceed as we normally have. So a over 4, change this to multiplication, flip this over 2 fifths. And then we look to see, can we cross cancel anything? And we have a 2 and a 4, so I can divide the top by 2 and divide it by the bottom by 2. That's going to give us a 2 there. And so on the top, we're going to have a times 1 gives us a, and 2 times 5 is going to give us 10. So we'll have a over 10, and that's basically as far as you're going to be able to take that. So you see, when you have fractions that have variables, it's not really anything different. It's just making sure you're following the, right, the same rules that we've been doing for everything else. x over, let's say, 5 divided by 1 and 3 fifths. 1 and 3 fifths. So let's convert this to improper. So we'll have x over 15 divided by 1 times 5 is 5 plus 3 is 8 over 5. And so rewriting this, we'll have x over 15 turns this into a multiplication, flip this over 5 eighths. And so on the top and the bottom, 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So we'll put a 3 right there. And so x times 1 is just going to give us x, and 3 times 8 is going to give us 24. So we'll have x over 24. And we'll get into a couple of additional problems that are a little bit more challenging looking. What if you had 6y squared over 7 divided by uh, 2y over 21? 2y over 21. And so what we have here, we'll just change it to a multiplication. 6y squared over uh, 7. And we'll change this to a multiplication, and we'll flip this guy over. So we'll have 21 over 2y. Now pay attention carefully to what we're going to do here, because there's going to be a lot of things going on. We have 7 and 21. We can divide both by 7. And that's going to give us a 3 here, and of course a 1 down here. Now as far as the numbers go, I have 2 and 6, so I can divide by 2, getting rid of that, and I can divide by 2, giving me 3. Now that takes care of the numbers everywhere. Now I have a y squared and a y, so there's y times y up here, and there's y over here. So I have, I'm sharing a y squared and a y, and so I can basically take one of these y's and cancel it with only one of them from the top. So I'm going to strike through that 2 because I'm only left with one y in the top. That's a lot of blue lines. So what I'm going to have in the end is 3 times y uh, times 3 over here, 
and then one times just one over here, so I'm gonna have one. So ultimately, it'll be three times three is nine y. Nine y is the answer. So make sure you totally understand what's going on in this cancellation. Dividing by seven, dividing by seven gives us this and this. Dividing by two gives us this and this. And then here, really what you're doing is dividing by y. y divided by y is one. y squared divided by y gives you y. But a better way to think about it is just canceling one of the y's with one of the y's in the top, leaving us with one y left over because this is y squared, y times y. All right, so we've done a tremendous amount in this section. We've covered how to divide fractions. What you've learned is that dividing fractions is really no different than multiplying. And you just change that division and multiplication, flip over your second fraction, and then you have a brand new multiplication problem that we've already practiced from doing all those multiplication problems from the past. So multiplying fractions, really exactly the same thing as dividing them. You need to check to see if you can cross simplify. Uh, and that's what we've been doing in all of these problems. When you get your final answer, see if you can simplify it further. Always check to see if your fractions are in simplest forms. If you need to go back to an improper fraction, do that as well. I'm Jason. Practice your problems. Watch this section a couple times if you need to. Fraction math is so important. You'll use it in all throughout algebra and in all the courses that follow. So make sure you truly understand it and practice your problems. Get really good. Build your skills.